I love my audio system. I love just being a hermit. I mean, you guys know me. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. Hold on. I have to take this. The reason I'm here is because Samsung invited us to their secret audio lab where they supposedly R&D all their like sound bars and like audio stuff for the TVs. And in fact, I searched on YouTube. It's their first time. Okay, so it's time to go to Samsung. Oh, look, it says Samsung. First of all, everybody that here absolutely loves music. What's special about this anechoic chamber? A couple of things. First of all, it is using fiberglass, which is the best sound absorber. Um, and then the other thing is, is the way we designed the microphone can move on this boom up and down through the vertical plane. And then the speaker sits on the stand here and it can rotate through the horizontal plane. So we can measure any point around the loudspeaker to really understand how it's gonna light up the room with sound. So like all the off axis vertically and horizontally every point. Now, I know that anechoic chambers are measured like rated for certain frequencies in the mm -hmm. low frequencies. What is this anechoic chamber rated for? This chamber is good to 80 hertz and below 80 hertz what we did was we measured a bunch of speakers outside in free space and then we measured them in here and we took the difference of each speaker inside and outside and took the average of that to get a calibration curve. So we know we're getting good measurements plus or minus a dB all the way down to 20 hertz. When you are measuring speakers what are you exactly looking for? Is it to like get transparent as possible? Is it to most neutral or yeah. do you it's the Samsung sound, what is that? So that's a really good question. A couple of the key points are, is that first of all, the most important thing is the amplitude response it needs to be flat. You know, you can't accentuate some tones and uh, push back other tones. You want it to be neutral. And that needs to be the direct sound that goes directly to the microphone in the chamber or to your ears when you're in a sound room and you're listening, but also for the off axis sounds, the sounds that are bouncing off side walls and the floor and ceiling, they have to be nicely balanced as well. And so with our audio automated measurements, moving the microphone and moving the speaker, we can characterize the way the speaker is energizing the whole room with sound, that direct sound and earlier arrivals that bounce off some of the boundaries and the later ones and make sure they're all balanced. And you have two of these. And we have two of these. This one's specialized for speakers that aren't too close to the walls. The other one's designed specifically for speakers that are close to the walls, for example, TVs and sound bars. Diffusion, absorption, reflection, it's all here. They're gigantic. And it's all adjustable. So we did some analysis of what sizes our customers put our speakers in. And when we designed the three rooms, we made sure that one room was at the average, one was at about the 75th percentile, and one's right between those. So we can simulate the size of the rooms that our customers are actually gonna put the speaker. We're trying to simulate different room acoustics. So some rooms are brighter sounding and some rooms are dead sounding. It's our reference room. Sounds really good. Yes, it does. I mean, and this is kind of, you know, when we were in the other room, we're doing some experiments. And so they weren't really set up optimally, but this room right now is is, is set up well. So yeah, you'll see there's our, one of our current sound bars right. Uh, right there. We're literally comparing our sound bars to studio monitors. You know, we, we don't see any value in comparing our sound bars to other sound bars other than just making sure that we are absolutely the best. But as we try to continue to improve the sound quality, we've got to compare against the reference standard. You play the sound bar and then you turn the sound bar off and then you play the multi-channel with the, all these speakers and then you compare the two. And we, we're comparing our sound bars to studio monitor. So here we have the Q990C sound bar. We also have this whole setup with um, these Genelec loudspeakers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play 7.1.4 music without uh, Jay knowing which one uh, is playing, the Genelec or the sound bar.
That was actually surprisingly very close. I'm kind of shook that that was that close. Is second one was a sound bar? Yes. Okay. Honestly, what gave it away was like in the beginning of the track, like I can tell that it's coming from here. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. that's the sound bar. If you played it from like halfway through when the, you know, the, the music was halfway through, <laughs> there's a terrible explanation. <laughs> I honestly would have a much harder time because like that portion sounds like I hear stuff coming from the back. Yeah. Four sided wall here. You know, we can mount TVs or sound bars and they all get strapped in, you know, it gets exactly in the right location, then we can close the door again. The difference between a really good couple of speakers um, is about the difference of moving them roughly half a meter. If you're not taking care of position, then you're not really learning what speaker sounds better. When you think about a sound bar, all the speakers are running all the time. If it's a five channel sound bar, or a seven channel sound bar, an 11 channel sound bar, whatever it is, you are energizing the whole system. We wanted to be able to compare the sound quality of our TVs easily, and we wanted to be able to compare the sound quality sound bars and both of those products are used close to walls and so what we did was we designed a section of wall that we can mount a TV on as big as a 75 inch TV and or a sound bar we can set up that system and it's now in this location play some music have the blind screen down and you're evaluating the sound of that product when you've decided that that product's a 7 or a 5 or a 2 whatever score you're going to give it after you listen to that song Put your score on the tablet and you hit say we labeled that one a you hit b the music stops the door is open the whole assembly moves in about four seconds and then the music starts playing again and it's a new product and the product's in the exact same location um it's an interesting thing about measuring speakers in rooms people that know what they're doing know you never use a single microphone um the reason for that is is that response peaks and dips can happen due to resonance or they can happen due to reflection. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they can look the same uh, with a single microphone measurement, but they sound dramatically different. What's interesting about doing a lot of measurements like these 15 is that when you average the response from these 15 is subtle differences at each location that are due to reflections average out. And the location where you are in the room, the where the listener is, is actually not that important notwithstanding being stupid like sticking your head in the corner mm -hmm. but like when you're in the good zone you're hearing the room and it basically sounds the same mm. when you consider that idea that when you move it doesn't change that much but when the speaker moves it changes a lot well alan thank you so much for having me take care man safe to say visiting samsung's audio lab really opened my eyes to what may be coming in the future as an audiophile, I've always had preconceived bias that sound bars were just not good enough. But the demo I heard and seeing Samsung's facility firsthand told a different story. It was an understatement that they were taking this seriously. And not only that, they were all music lovers at heart that truly wanted to create something amazing for every music lover or movie lovers out there.